So today I want to do some testing on effects of different lens sizes. Um, so you can see here from left to right I have a 70, a 110, a 150, and then in the laser right now is a 200 millimeter lens. Um, I just want to see the different power densities. Obviously we all know the size, uh, the footprint difference that we're going to be able to uh, get. And so far I've done... Um, I don't want to say an exhaustive amount, but plenty of testing on surface engraving uh, and the differences between trying to get dark marks um, versus light marks for speed versus power. Uh, and honestly, I've seen no difference between a 70 to a 200 millimeter lens and surface marking. Uh, so if your plan is to get a laser to do surface engraving, uh, I would say that definitively it's not worth spending the extra money uh, to get a higher wattage laser. However, um, what I am noticing is that depth, uh, it makes a huge difference. So uh, today, uh, I, the only one I haven't run right now uh, is the 200 millimeter uh, lens that I'm about to do here. Uh, I took video, I actually posted in my last video, of the 110 which is on the bottom, that's the 70, and then that's the 150, excuse me, uh, and I'm about to do the 200. So I'll film uh, doing the 200 millimeter, uh, and then we will get over uh, and measure all the holes. I'll say that uh, the difference so far has been about a 30% um, difference as it goes smaller, you get 30% deeper. Uh, for the step sizes that I've, uh, the changes that I've made. Um, so we'll see if, if 200 millimeters follows that. And again, I'll just uh, show you guys the, the heights. All right, so this is gonna be the 200 millimeter lens. That is what and where we're marking. And let's start. All right, so here we have the final part, uh, this piece of aluminum you can ignore. It was a scrap uh, piece that I tried to mill. Uh, as you can see, I messed some stuff up. Uh, so I'll go through uh, and measure all of these. Uh, for now, I think you can get an okay perspective of the difference in height. Uh, sorry if that focus isn't perfect. It's a very reflective surface, so it might not do a good job. Um, but I'm not going to bore you with measuring every single uh, one, just the most notable. So uh, these numbers at the bottom were off of that file that uh, I got from another YouTube user uh, on his 20 watt laser. Um, just for reference, these are the number of passes. Uh, this is his depth that he got. Uh, I don't know what material he got that in. I think he was using some copper. This is 6061 aluminum. So uh, if you can't read that, these holes are supposed to be. Uh, see if I can get a focus. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Uh, these holes are supposed to be one thousandth, two, three, four, and five thousandths deep uh, with the settings that he has. Uh, again, I engraved the lenses that I used on here. Um, unfortunately, I didn't progress in any sort of logical fashion, uh, so I wanted to make sure I marked them so I didn't forget. Um, so most notably, this 5,000 steep hole, uh, I was going to do this over on the granite surface plate and get an accurate measurement, uh, but with mm -hmm. holes this deep, that just wasn't possible. So uh, instead, I'm resorting to using a um, uh, Steric caliper, and I'm going to use the tip on the end uh, as sort of a depth micrometer. In no way is this a precise measurement, so uh, do take these numbers with a grain of salt. But um, for comparison, uh, I think it's a good example. So you'll be able to tell the relative differences in uh, depths, uh, and the actual depth depth will be good down to you know a few thousandths of accuracy. So uh, most notably, I'll just go the deepest hole from the 200 millimeter to the 70. Uh, so you can get a difference there, and then I'll measure all these off camera, um, or maybe I'll record it and make a table, and then I will just uh, show you the table at the end. So uh, this is the 200 millimeter 
again on a 20 watt laser. This is uh, allegedly five thousandths deep, and I'm getting 55 thousandths deep, so about 11 times as deep. Um, and now to go down to the 70 uh, millimeter lens, and this is difficult because if you can see, there's a little step here uh, that barely makes it, and I actually think it's making contact uh, on the face before it bottoms out. So uh, it might be, you know, a few thousandths deeper than I'm even measuring with this, but that's 121 and a half thousandths, 120 thousandths. So uh, just under an eighth inch deep. So supposed to be a five thousandths deep hole with a 50 watt laser and 70 millimeter lens. I got about an eighth of an inch deep, give or take a few thousands. Um, so to me, that is the uh, the biggest difference between a 20 and a 50 watt laser, as well as the 200 to 70 millimeter lens. Again, and I'll try to take some pictures of these, but uh, I did these surface engraving um, test pieces, uh, all with different lenses. And honestly, I didn't even mark which one was which, but there is no perceptible difference in my mind uh, between the 70 to 150 uh, down to 200 millimeter lens. So if what you're trying to do is surface engrave and surface mark, uh, kind of like I did here on a piece of aluminum or steel uh, or remove some um, anodizing or Cerakote, then I really don't see the need to jump to a 50 watt laser. However, if your goal is to, you know, punch right through eighth inch aluminum or get really decent depth in a uh, okay amount of time in steel, uh, then the 50 watt is definitely where you want to go. And the smaller lens that you can possibly use, the better. Um, another thing to note, and I think this might be fairly important for some people, what you couldn't see while I was doing these is off camera. Um, I was adjusting the, let's see if I can see it. I was adjusting the height, um, which adjusts the focus of the lens. Um, so as I would get deeper, I would come in, uh, closer, obviously jumping in eighth of or dropping down an eighth of an inch in depth. Um, you're not going to be focused where you were an eighth of an inch higher. Um, so I had to do that. I would just slowly dial that down uh, every five or so passes down to the eighth of an inch depth. Um, so two things to note with that. For this, it wasn't a big deal. This, you know, whole uh, laser time was a few minutes. But if you're doing a really large part and you're trying to go really deep in it, uh, standing there and manually adjusting the focus the whole time uh, may be something that you don't want to do. So uh, maybe some thoughts about doing the whole piece in, uh, you know, 10,000 increments and then coming back and just adjusting it between passes um, might be a good idea. But something I did want to bring up that I noticed was... Um, um, the difference between how much I had to adjust the 70 millimeter to the 200 millimeter was substantial. Um, I don't just mean because the 70 millimeter was more than twice as deep that um, I had to adjust it twice as often. The, I'll say, allowance for focal point on uh, a larger lens is much, much greater. Um, so being, you know, 10 thousandths out of focus with a 70 millimeter lens made a really large difference. Being 10 uh, thousandths out of focus with the 200 millimeter lens wasn't so uh, much of a difference to me. And I think I attribute that just, just the focal height of it. Uh, obviously, you have a, a laser coming down and converging, uh, trying to get a focused beam. The higher that you come up, then that beam is going to have a marginally uh, smaller change in its focus uh, for the height that you have. So again, more of just a, a note on the things that I observed than uh, a make or break on the differences between lenses. So uh, I think now I'm going to go, I'm going to measure all these and I'll come back with some final thoughts.
So some last minute thoughts. Uh, would I buy this laser again? Would I do it in a 50 watt? Uh, would I do it in a 20 watt? Uh, would I go with this seller? Would I try to find a cheaper one? Um, those are a lot of the questions that I've gotten asked recently. Uh, the answers are yes, I would buy this again. Uh, yes, I would go with this 50 watt. Uh, I debated a hundred watt, but the price difference, um, so I haven't said it on camera. I don't think I've said it in the comments, but, uh, this whole package cost me about $7,500 after shipping tax, uh, the extra lenses. I do have a rotary down there that I haven't really played with yet. Um, and a hundred watt is about, uh, you know, 15 to 17,000 and that price jump just for me, uh, isn't worth it. Uh, am I happy with the seller? Uh, without a doubt, the, the seller that, uh, I used has unfortunately since raised their price. So, uh, this laser now goes for about $8,200 with all the accessories I have. Um, but phenomenal communication. They're uh, obviously a Chinese seller. Um, but they have awesome communica communication skills. Their emails back and forth were very coherent, uh, which I don't mean that to be insulting, but, uh, with some other people that I tried to correspond with on Amazon and eBay, uh, just simply were not. Uh, and that was something that was important to me. Uh, they've reached out to me since and asked if I had any questions and uh, if I was liking the laser. So yes, uh, I would, um, get this laser from this seller again. I probably paid about $1,500. Uh, more than if I went with a cheaper uh, seller on eBay. But uh, to me, that's that seems like a lot of money, uh, and it really is. But uh, for me, it was worth it. I, I got what I was expecting, uh, and I'm really happy with it. Um, the glasses, the quote-unquote laser glasses that come with uh, the unit, they're just crap. Uh, I mean, they work, but not great. Uh, these were not expensive. I got these on Amazon and they're probably not great either, but they fit better. They feel better. So if there's some interest, I'll uh, link to these. And I think that was worth the investment. Um, I've done plenty of testing, not all of it great. Um, so that's uh, something that I'm going to eventually get to. I've been trying to work on getting dark marks and things like that in um all sorts of materials and, um, you know, maybe I'll try to start posting on some of the different things, um, testing that I do, but there's other users out there that do a better job than I do, um, at that. So, uh, yes, I'm happy with it. I would go with it again. Uh, I haven't done a lot of real products yet. Um, I did make a pretty great looking, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, Harley Davidson ring for a friend, uh, at a 304 stainless. I cut that on the mill, uh, and then I finished it on the laser. Maybe I'll add a couple pictures of that if, uh, the person I made it for is okay with that. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just really, really happy with the laser so far. Uh, no complaints. The easy CAD software, uh, has been working great. Um, this is me. I was just working on that text. Um, to, so I knew which holes were which. Um, so if you have any questions at all, if there's something you want me to laser, uh, just to see how it lasers or with a different lens, uh, I now have the parameters figured out for all four of my lenses. So it's easy to swap back and forth. Uh, I saved all of those. So I don't have to, uh, redo that again. So if there's anything you want to see lasered, um, and, you know, want to try with a different lens, or if you're interested in getting something like this, uh, just feel free to comment and I'd be glad to answer or try anything that I can. Thanks for watching.